Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is strip lines. But before studying the strip lines, let us complete the part of TM mode. TM stands for transverse magnetic mode. In the last video, we have discussed TE modes that was transverse electric mode. Now remaining mode is TM mode. As I said, this is transverse magnetic mode. That means if the direction of propagation of wave is along Z, then its magnetic component cannot be along Z direction because it is transverse direction. So the uh, direction of magnetic component will be transverse that is perpendicular to the Z direction. Now, we have discussed in TE modes, the dominant mode is TE10 mode. This was the list of formulae which we have studied in earlier video. So TE10 mode is a dominant mode in transverse electric mode. Whereas in case of TM, TM11 mode that is transverse magnetic 11 mode is a dominant mode. We have already studied the basic notation is TE or TM to the base small m small n. So this is T M11 that is M is equals to 1, N is equals to 1. It is the dominant mode. Now let us discuss one numerical. A rectangular cavity having a dimensions 8 centimeter into 3.5 centimeter. We know that uh, these are the dimensions related to A and B. So A is 8 centimeters that is 8 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters and B is equals to 3.5 centimeters, which is 3.5 into 10 raised to minus 2 meters. So these are the dimensions of given rectangular wavelength is filled with pure dielectric. If the signal or if propagates uh, the signal at a frequency of 6 gigahertz, so this F that is operating frequency is given as 6 gigahertz. Calculate cutoff frequency that is FC and velocity of propagation for the dominant TM mode. Now, this is the formula to calculate the cutoff frequency. See, in case of TE dominant mode, we have used this uh, formula. It is one and the same. Only the thing is that here, I have to put the value of uh, dominant mode. That means I have to put M is equals to one and N is equals to one. As I mentioned, the notation is TMMN. Dominant mode is TM11 mode. So small m is 1, small n is 1. So in this equation, let us put all these values. So A, we have written 8 into 10 raised to minus 2. Value of B is 3.5 into 10 raised to minus 2. M is 1, n is 1. Mu is mu 0. We are considering it as a free space. So value of mu 0, we already discussed in last video, 4.2 to 10 raised to minus 7. Value of epsilon that is epsilon 0 is 8.854 into 10 raised to minus 12. So if you put all these values, then the answer of cutoff frequency that is Fc, which is which will be 4.67 gigahertz. This is the answer of first part that is cutoff frequency. Second thing, it is asked to calculate velocity of propagation that is same as the phase velocity. We have a ready-made formula. So it is C upon square root of uh, 1 minus Fc by F bracket square. C is the speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 and uh, divided by square root of 1 minus Fc. Just now we have calculated this value of Fc. F is the operating frequency. This operating frequency is 6 gigahertz. So you just have to put the values. So value of Vp will be 4.67 into 10 raised to 8. So this is the way how to solve the numericals related to this uh, transverse magnetic mode. Next an important part is comparison between TE modes and TM modes. So this table gives the comparative analysis of transverse electric and transverse magnetic mode. So first point is, as the name indicates, TE means it is transverse electric mode, TM means it is transverse magnetic mode. Then since it is transverse electric mode and if we assume that the propagation of power or propagation of wave is along z direction then there will not be any component of e or electric field intensity along the direction of propagation that is along z direction so ez is equals to zero uh, because this is te mode so transmission of energy is done or taking place with the help of hz 
because EZ is zero. So only remaining component is magnetic field along Z direction and this causes the transmission of energy. Opposite case, in case of TM mode, Z is equals to zero. So transmission of energy takes place with the help of EZ. Then dominant mode is T10 and in this case dominant mode is TM11 mode. Then cutoff frequency, FC stands for cutoff frequency, this notation. FC is cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency of dominant mode is less than TM11 mode, whereas cutoff frequency of dominant mode is greater than T10 mode for TM modes. Then important uh, comparison. T01 and T10 modes exist, whereas in case of TM, TM01 and TM10 mode do not does not exist. Then cutoff wavelength, that is lambda c for the dominant mode. We know that dominant mode is T10 mode, so lambda c cutoff wavelength for dominant mode is given by two times a, and uh, for TM modes it is given by two ab upon square root of a square plus b square. Next part is strip lines. From the exam point of view, you may expect the direct question like <clears throat> draw structural details of a strip line, what are its types and what are the applications of strip line. So this diagram shows structural details of a strip line. Basically what is a strip line? It is similar to the coaxial cable. It consists of a strip conductor which is a thin strip conductor and this operates, this strip line operates in transverse electromagnetic that is TEM mode. As I said, this is the diagram which represents structural details. This is the strip conductor having width W. T is the thickness of a strip conductor. The base is a dielectric substrate having a permittivity epsilon r. This height is H and it consists of two ground planes. This, this is top ground plane, this is bottom ground plane. So the structure is symmetric. Now this diagram shows the field configuration. Uh, this E field, that is electric field, is drawn with black ink and magnetic field is around this strip which is drawn with the red ink. So this diagram shows the electric field distribution uh, for the strip lines. Now, the different types of strip lines, first is double conductor strip line, second offset strip line and third is suspended strip line. It's important applications, whenever you want to realize, design any micro component, then strip lines are used, then they are used in high speed digital circuits and in wireless communication and radar systems. There is one more variation as far as these strip lines are concerned, which is called micro strip line. In case of micro strip line, the structure is not symmetric. It is unsymmetric structure. In that case, this bottom, this top uh, ground plane is not present and bottom ground plane is connected to the uh, ground. So this micro strip line are basically uh, manufactured by using automated technologies and these micro strip uh, strip lines, micro strip lines are used in case of high speed digital circuits. Next part and last part of this unit is cavity resonator. So cavity resonator is basically a volume having any arbitrary shape. So this is a volume having any arbitrary shape and it is enclosed by the conducting walls. The different types of cavity resonators are rectangular cavity resonator, cylindrical and re-entrant cavity resonator. This re-entrant is more important. Now, in case of cavity resonators, both the fields that is electric and magnetic fields are enclosed by the cavity, are enclosed inside the cavity. So, these cavities decides the equivalent inductance and capacitance. There is one term which is denoted by F0. F0 is called resonant frequency. Our aim is to obtain the resonant frequency. Now, as I said, re-entrant cavity are more important. So, in this case, the main aim is inductor and capacitor, that is L and C, must be reduced to obtain F0. F0 is the resonant frequency. So, if you reduce inductor and capacitor, then the operating frequency will be equivalent to the resonant frequency. And in case of re-entrant cavity resonators, the metallic boundaries extend 
in the interior of the cavity it is it is basically used to support the resonant frequency now this structure is similar to the coaxial cable which is shorted at both ends and at the center a capacitor is used now at the high frequency this this part this term is l that is multiple inductors multiple turn inductor is shown and these are multiple plate capacitors so at the higher frequency multi turn inductor and multi plate capacitors are reduced by this structure which consists of a single inductor shown by this cord line and a single capacitor as you go on in further increasing the frequency then in that case to reduce the inductor two inductors are used it will reduce the effect of inductance and the gap between the plates of a capacitor is increased so it will happen when again you will increase the uh, frequency that is you can say at very high frequency if there are much more turns for the inductor then in that case the structure is reduced it will look like a toroid structure it is a hollow toroid structure now these are the different shapes of reentrant uh, cavity i mean these are the shapes which is used to design the cavity advantages are l and c that is inductor and capacitors are reduced this downward arrow indicates the values are reducing then radiation loss is reduced and bandwidth of the structure is improved applications it is used in in tuned circuits then uhf that is high ultra high frequency tubes then klystron amplifiers all these terms we are going to study in the latter units then cavity magnetron and in the radar system so dear students that's it for unit number 2 so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video